some, some of y'all might know, about five years ago, I was an analyst at a hedge fund, and I was in Boston, and I was tutoring my cousins in New Orleans remotely. And I started putting the first YouTube videos up, really just as kind of a nice to have, just kind of a supplement for my cousin, something that might you know, give, give them a refresher or something. And as soon as I put those first YouTube videos up, something interesting happened. They told me that they preferred me on YouTube than in person. <laughs> you have this situation where now they can pause and repeat their cousin. Now they can, uh, without feeling like they're wasting my time, they could, if they have to uh, review something that they should have learned a couple of weeks ago or maybe a couple of years ago, uh, they, they don't have to be embarrassed and, and ask their cousin. They can just watch those videos. If they're bored, they can go ahead. They can watch it at their own time, at their own pace. In a, in a traditional classroom, you have a couple of uh, uh, homework, homework lecture, homework lecture, and then you have a snapshot exam. And that exam, whether you get a, a 70%, an 80%, a 90%, or a 95%, the class moves on to the next topic. And even that 95% that, that student, what was the 5% they didn't know? Maybe they didn't know what, what happens when you raise something to the, to the zeroth power. And then you go build on that in the next concept. That's analogous to, uh, imagine learning to ride a bicycle. And I give you a bicycle, maybe I give you a lecture ahead of time, and, and I give you that, that bicycle for two weeks, and then I come back after two weeks, and I say, well, let's see, you're having trouble taking left turns, you can't quite stop. You're, you're an 80% bicyclist, so I put a big C stamp on your forehead. And then I say, here's a unicycle. <laughs> but I, I, as ridiculous as that sounds, that's exactly what's happening in, in, our, in, our, in our classrooms right now. And, and, and the idea is, you know, you, you fast forward and students start, good students start failing algebra all of a sudden and start failing uh, calculus all of a sudden, despite it being smart, despite having good teachers, and it's usually because they had these Swiss cheese gaps that kept building throughout their foundation. So our, our model is, Learn math the way you would learn anything, like the way you would learn a bicycle. Stay on that bicycle. Fall off that bicycle. Do it as long as necessary until you have mastery. The traditional model, it penalizes you for experimentation and failure, but it does not expect mastery. We encourage you to experiment. We ex encourage you to failure, but we do expect mastery. This is actually data from a pilot in the Los Altos School District, where they took two fifth grade classes and two seventh grade classes and completely gutted their old math curriculum. These kids aren't using textbooks, they're not getting one-size-fits-all lectures, they're doing Khan Academy, they're doing that software for roughly half of their math class. And I want to make it clear, we don't view this as the complete math education. What it does is, and this is what's happening in Los Altos, it frees up time. This is the blocking and tackling, making sure you know how to do a system of equations, and it frees up time for the simulations, for the games, for the mechanics, for the, for the robot building, for, for the estimating how high that hill is based on its, on its shadow. And so the paradigm is the teacher walks in every day, every kid works at their own pace, and a teacher gets, this is actually a live dashboard from Los Altos School District, and they look at this dashboard. Every row is a student, Every column is one of those concepts. Green means the student's already proficient. Blue means that they're working on it, no need to worry. Red means they're stuck. And what the teacher does is literally just says, let me intervene on the red kids. Or even better, let me get one of the green kids who are already proficient in that concept to be the first line of attack and actually tutor their, their peer. But when you let every student work at their own pace, and we see it over and over and over again, you see students who took a little bit extra time on one concept or the other, but once they get through that concept, they just race ahead. And so the same kids that you thought were slow six weeks ago, you now would think are gifted. And we're seeing it over and over and over again. It makes you really wonder uh, kind of how much all of the labels maybe a lot of us have benefited from uh, were really just due to a, a coincidence of time.